discussing the concept of the emperor over the sea and how there could possibly be an emperor without an empire. In the Chronicles of Narnia, there are several fleeting mentions of a character named the Emperor over the Sea, who is Aslan's father and the ultimate authority figure in Narnia. However, there doesn't seem to be any room for an emperor due to the competing powers of the Narnian king, the Tisrock of the Kellermen, or the Dukes of the Lonely Isles. The Emperor over the Sea, the father of the lion and Christ symbol Aslan, rules as omnipotent, even though he paradoxically seems to have no empire, because he actually exemplifies God the Father, and by extension nature following C.S. Lewis's definition of nature. This point is emphasized by the fact that Lewis intended for Aslan to represent Jesus, meaning by extension the emperor would have to represent God. The symbolism of God allowed for the idea of an empireless emperor. God doesn't necessarily need a kingdom directly under his control in order to be God. He can still exert influence and control over everything through indirect methods. Throughout the novels, the emperor is always positioned to take action, but never seems to do so. The seeming inaction by the emperor makes it difficult to comprehend the idea of the emperor and his authority, but this scarcity of mention was with purpose. It allowed for Lewis to not only differentiate between the Aslan and the emperor, but also establish symbolism of Aslan and the emperor as Jesus and God, respectively. Similar to God in the Bible, the emperor has an ultimate plan for Narnia, but sends Aslan, or Jesus in God's case, to do his bidding. This means that the Emperor is a dynamic and influential character, even though he never makes an appearance to the physical being. The idea of an Emperor without an Empire seems paradoxical. An Emperor is supposed to have power over vast regions, yet the Emperor does not seem to fit this description. For example, since the Calermans seem to have no problem invading their neighbor in a horse and his boy, a normal Emperor would have to step in, lest the Calerman eventually attempt to usurp the Emperor's power. This motivation to peacekeep extends beyond just self-preservation of power. An empire needs peace to be successful. This connects to the idea that although the emperor isn't involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the empire, he still has overall influence due to the fear and emotion exhibited by the inhabitants of Narnia when his name is mentioned. This power is similar to that of God's power over the world in the New Testament, and how he sends Jesus, or in the emperor's case Aslan, to do his bidding. Thus, through Aslan, the Emperor was able to exert his Emperorship upon Narnia, even though he didn't actually have any land holdings. The Emperor over the Sea is scarcely mentioned, but apparently incredibly powerful within the Chronicles of Narnia series. Lewis created the character of the Emperor to not appear to be involved in Narnia, but in fact a significant influence upon its goings-on through Aslan. This relationship between the Emperor and Aslan is symbolic of that between God and Jesus in the New Testament, where Jesus did God's bidding upon Earth. Because of this representation of the emperor as God, it could therefore be said the emperor is also symbolic of nature. This relates to the world today through the idea that there's always some being of higher, of higher power, whether it's religious or not. Lewis believes that God and nature are essentially the same thing, meaning they have this similar impact upon humanity and the world as a whole. Nature, and therefore God, has a distinct impact upon humanity, whether that be weather or access to food and water, which cannot be controlled by humanity. Humans need to learn to respect this power and realize it cannot be controlled. Without this power, Lewis would argue, humanity would not be able to survive either spiritually or physically.